What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the second part of a story where Issei was betrayed and became the Jinchuriki of Kyuubi. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more informations. Also, this is a translate version, you may find some mistakes, specifically in the character's gender. Issei of course is a male, but this time we have a female volley, female drag and female great red. Welp, with that out, let's get into part 2. In the underworld. Wedding day, 5 hours later. Everyone was worried about Ash's health because despite seeing him give several phoenix tears, he was still in the Citri hospital, but after the Citrus treated him they were able to cure him, but despite that you must occasionally get dizzy and vomit blood. Some parts were bleeding like the ear of the nose, no one knew the reason for this, but they believed that the guy who interrupted the ceremony had something to do with it. Many wanted to look for him to find out how he obtained his power, in addition to taking revenge for what he did to him, but several they believed it was a bad idea due to the fact that it not only left the pillar in that state, but also defeated the god Shiva, who is one of the ten most powerful beings in the world. They knew that provoking it would be idiotic, but many believed that they could not handle it their factions, but thanks to the fact that both the leaders and the dragon gods and other gods gave an order not to look for him for the moment, since they did not know his powers or the limit of his strength. Bremery Mansion. Living Room. They were all watching as Ash was back vomiting in the bathroom. There he is. It can't be, it's been two days, so that guy must have done something to him. Asia. Ash Khan must be suffering a lot, not even with my healing powers I can improve his condition, I can only relieve him of the pain he has. The Keno. Thanks to that our intimate moments were a little delayed due to his health. Roswis. Akeno is not the time to think about that, we must look for how we can heal him. Arena. It is true we must look for a cure for your situation. Hopefully God will guide us to a solution for this problem. Valerie. Then we should look for the person who did that to him and force him to give us the cure, in addition to returning everything he did to him, we cannot wait for the leaders to give us permission, we should go out and look for him right now. Hineko. True, we should go and teach him that he shouldn't mess with our mate. Hiroka. My sister is right we must avenge our man Naya. They all agreed with what was said, but when they were about to leave office appeared and said. The office. No one understood anything, they are not opponents for that guy, remember what the red one said, even though I don't like what I will say, we are not opponents for him, we don't know how strong he is, or what other tricks he will have. The Fae. But office Sama. The office. No. Everyone saw how he left Ash and Shiva, not even I could do that. If we look for him and provoke him we could die, think how the others would be in the face of that. They all saw how he showed us how he would leave the underworld if we bothered him, plus we don't know anything about him. Zenovia. Then we should find Sekvera and force her to tell us his identity. The office. I said no, no one will do anything, just take care of Ash until we find a way to cure him, well I have to go, I'll go see if the red one found a cure. He said while heading towards a gap. And you better obey what I said, if you don't want me to eliminate you, I won't allow everyone to be in danger because of you. She turned and crossed the gap, closing herself. They were all quiet, she was right, but they didn't want to be left without being able to do something, but they decided to listen to her and went to the room to see how Ash was doing. Two days after the wedding. Underworld meeting room. All the leaders were there with the goddesses, and other faction leaders were waiting for those who were missing to come, a while later Ash and the girls showed up. Serzich's. Well my sister has already arrived, and from what I see Ash also came, only Ajuka's niece and Sekvera are missing. Ajuka. Laisha told me that she told Sekvera about the meeting, and that they would be here soon. Everyone was serious about this, they knew that they couldn't do anything to her, if they didn't want their mate to attack them, so they would just talk to her about what they could and see what to do. Meanwhile at Issei's house. Two hours after Issei left, and two hours before the meeting. Sekvera and Laisha were waking up, after getting ready they both went to the kitchen since they didn't see Issei, when they came down, they saw breakfast with a note why he didn't wake them up, because they were arriving late to the academy, in addition to wishing him well. Days to both. Sekvera. Well, I guess he must have been so careful with our breakfast that he missed the hour, he's very cute, but he should have woken us up like this, we all had breakfast together as a family, but well, it's better to hurry up too, since we have to go to the meeting in the underworld. He spoke as he proceeded to eat what Issei made him for breakfast. Aisha. You're right, we should hurry, but we should be more considerate about waking up earlier to be able to enjoy breakfast with Ice Kun. She said while eating what the brunette had made. Sekvera. You are right. After having had breakfast, they both went to change when they were ready, they both went to the living room and saw another letter on the living room table with a bracelet, they both proceeded to take both the object and the letter and read it. Sekvera. 
Si Chan, this gift of mine could help you cover up my essence, so you won't be able to know that we are together, in addition to being able to feel our state, no matter how far we are from each other. The essence thing would be more because of what we did, but don't worry Lottie Chan I plan for both of us to do it after the date we will have, I want it to be a moment that you will never forget, so let's say that it is a promise that indicates what I have planned to do in the future, so I hope you accept this for now until may the time come where we are one with love is APS take care of something. Happens I will go immediately. Aisha. How sweet he is for thinking about our good and how nice the bracelet he gave you is, but it bothers me that he only gave it to you to hide the essence of Ice Kun for what they did, but he promised that we would both do it, so for now I let him pass it by, but I hope you don't get ahead of yourself knowing that I'm also with Sikfara. He said, happy because of how the brunette is with him, but serious about Sikfara. Sikfara. Laisha, don't be jealous, remember that he belongs to both of us at the moment, and I was the one who was with him at that moment when he was very emotionally hurt, when he was hurt, when he needed someone to take care of him and love him. But now he has both of us to heal his heart, so I hope we put this dispute aside, so we can make him happy together as sisters. Laisha. You're right but I hope you respect that. Well we must go and the meeting will be in an hour, my Queen Rose has just confirmed it for me, so let's finish and go to return early and be with Issei. Given what was said, both finished getting ready and thus the factions met. Underworld. Meeting room everyone was talking about what they should do, and the girls wanted them to force Ikvara to tell them who the headed man was. But just then the Queen of Laisha appears through the door and politely greets everyone. Rose. Good morning leaders and heirs. Serziches. Welcome, do you know where your King Rosen is? Rose. It doesn't take long for Lord Lucifer to arrive with the heirs of Gares. Before anyone said anything about why she came with Sikvara, a magic circle appeared behind Roswis from which Laisha and Sikvara emerged under everyone's watchful eye. Laisha. Thank you Rose for anticipating the meeting and preparing our arrival. Rose. There is no problem, Lady Laisha, it is my duty as your queen. Sikvara. Good morning faction leaders, as you wanted, here I am to answer some of your questions. She said seriously and stoic as always. But before any of the leaders asked someone spoke. Ash. Wow, but look who disdained to show up, the bitch herself who refused to marry me for another person of low lineage, tell me where this person is who stole your hand, since he is not with you right now. There he is. Surely he must have been afraid to appear here in front of everyone, he is just a man who uses tricks to seem strong for sure hahaha. He said earning a laugh from the others. Sikvara. He is not available, he had more important things to do than being here today, besides, he only used his physical strength in the meeting, he did not use any of his powers, so the only one here who uses the fame and power of another, is you unfortunate useless. She said giving a mocking and superior smile. Everyone, upon hearing Sikvara's sharp tongue, was ready for this, but then Riaz increases her power and stops trying to scare Sikvara, who without any fear repeats the action, but before this could go any further, someone stopped them. Ajuka. Enough, we don't come to fight today, she said, making sure that both heiresses stopped releasing their aura and sat down. We are here because we have to talk about the current attacks that we have on our factions, and also, no one can blame you for someone having fought. And won her hand, remember that your two sisters did the same or something similar to save themselves from their commitments, so you cannot blame anything. He said, ensuring that both Serafal and Serzichas will sit down before replying to Sikvera. And you two Sona and Rias can't claim it either, even if Serzichas is my friend, I can't let him give up his duties as Lucifer for his sister. Everyone was silent about this, the fact that Mr. Ajuka has put a heavy hand on the problems that were happening. Ajuka. Well now that we are calm let's continue with the meeting, as you know our territories are being attacked by this new race. He said showing a hologram of the creatures that are facing each other. Ajuka. As you can see, these creatures are minotaurs, but they are not the same as those in the Yakes faction, as you can see, they have two other pairs of arms, in addition to being more wild, strong and violent. We believe that someone is creating them in some way since thanks to the results of studying their corpses, it was seen that they all possessed several genetic samples of several creatures at the same time. Leaving everyone surprised by the data given. Before you ask how this is done, I want to tell you that despite all the studies that were done, we could not find out how they managed to fuse so many genetic samples into one individual. We believe that the mind behind this is someone who has a high knowledge of genetics. Of each species such as devils, yaukes and others. Everyone was worried about this information, it was not easy to create a being with such mixed genes without dying in the attempt. Bra. So you say that a person is creating these abominations and sending them to our territories to attack us, because they would do that. Ajuka. Exactly, I think that although I don't like to admit it, possibly the person who creates them is even more intelligent than me, but I think that he doesn't do it alone, he must have help from others, since it wouldn't be possible for him to do it alone. Auden. So you say that. 
Ajuka. It is very likely that it is a new group like the Cow's Brigade. He said, extending everyone. Possibly they have people who survived from the brigade working with them, that is why he obtained the DNA samples to be able to create them, possibly they are building an army with them. Everyone was serious and worried about what had been said, if it was true they were facing an enemy that had a force greater than the Cow's Brigade. Ajuka. At the moment these are just my conjectures, but seeing that they only attack in important areas, I think that would be the most accurate theory at the moment. We should reinforce our kingdoms and armies. We have not yet recovered from the previous confrontation. Furthermore, it seems that this possible enemy remains anonymous at the moment, so we must wait for his leaders to appear in some attack, so that they can be seen. Zeus. Then we must prepare for a future war again, we must all raise our defenses against this problem, what do the dragon goddesses think about this? Scarlet. I think the same as you, Zeus, we must prepare for the future, but I would like to ask the Eris Agares a question if you allow me. Everyone was surprised by how he asked Sikvera's permission if he could ask him a question. Sikvera. If it is within my knowledge, I will answer it Scarlet Sama. Scarlet. Does your mate. Have a name by which to address us like this? Everyone was paying attention to obtain information about that subject and thus be able to know more about him. Sikvera. He asked me not to give much information about him at the moment. Everyone was disappointed by this. I will only say that he usually calls himself by a nickname when he usually introduces himself to someone. Scarlet. And what is that nickname if you may know? Sikvera. Often nicknamed the Monarch of the Abyss. Scarlet. Interesting nickname, but I wanted to know if if this new brigade attacked he would be with the factions lending his power. Sikvera. Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't think that he only tends to get involved in this war when I am on average in supernatural issues, and he also usually only defends humans, since he doesn't trust the supernatural. Seraphal. Who oh and why would that distrust be like that if he is dating you that you are from the supernatural? Sikvera. He knows me besides playing mutual love, but apart from me he doesn't like other races, he says that they are arrogant in front of others that they believe they are the most powerful beings when they are only arrogant, dependent on others and very treacherous beings. Seraphal. It's kind of arrogant that I come here and say it up front. Scarlet. Enough Leviathan, you know that if he comes and is provoked, he is capable of eliminating us. We should not have any more enemies knowing that a new group appeared with these things, then we will take care of him. But that said and the group's issues to defend themselves settled, everyone withdrew. Issei was in the music club room preparing his things to compose a new song. Issei. Okay, that's it, I have the instruments ready and my songbook. Hirama. Hey Issei. Issei. Yes. Hirama. How about you make a channel like your friend Ika's and upload your songs? Issei. Hum I don't know, I don't think I should, I don't think I'm very good at uploading my songs. Hirama. You're crazy, remember how many people saw Ika's live performance with your song, you're good at that, listen, I know that maybe you think you're inferior because of what you lived through, but you have to move on and forge your path, remember that no, you only have Sikvera who was there for you, then I appeared, and then Laisha joined us, you must believe in yourself. They say. Haha, <laughs> you are the best friend I have, Karama. You know that to hell with what people say about me, I will do what I want from now on, help me create an account to upload my songs. Karama. You already roared let's go. It took them both a while to set up their music account to post Issei's songs. Issei. Well, all we need is a name and a profile image, some ideas. Karama. Who what do you think of the Ascended? Issei. It's good but we should see more options, how about fulling I noticed. Karama. Drop note here, it seems good, but we should choose one that is more in line with you and me. What do you think about sound of feelings since you always usually sing with your heart and also according to your feelings you usually sing? Issei. I like it, we should choose that, but in which photo should we choose? Parama. How is it? I took it out when we were in the forest the day we met Laisha. Issei. It's a good photo. Said Lai after putting it in profile. Well the account is here, and the first song I will upload will be the one I compassed for Sikvera, now that I think about it, I should also make one for Laisha. Parama. You should see how he looked when Sikvera told him about his night of passion, I don't want to see them like that they gave me chills that day brrr. Issei. You're right, well, I'm going to choose one to sing, let's see, I wrote this one for her when we were in the forest the day we met her, I'm sure she remembers it, it would be good to dedicate it to her, but I'll change a couple of things. A while after I've done it. Reformed, he was ready to sing it. Well, it's better now, so here we go. Parama. Well, you sing and I'll record. Issei. Okay here I go. Issei. Well what do you think partner? Parama. You can tell it was the one from that time, plus those changes helped give it that touch, it looked great on you. Issei. 
Well then let's upload it to the account, and then at her date I'll sing it to her, what do you think? Karama. That's a good idea. After editing it and giving it a few more touches, Issei uploaded the song to the account with the name, A Song For You. Issei. Okay, now what do we do? We have 1 15 minutes before we have to leave. Karama. Well, we can go now, then remember that they were in a meeting so they may be about to return. Issei. True, and if I'm there I'll surely be able to hear what happened in the meeting. They both began to put their things away and left the exit. When they were leaving, Issei ran into Ruby and her friends who were leaving there. Issei. Hello Ruby. He spoke while giving a smile. Upon hearing her name, Ruby turned to her friends. When they did, they all blushed at Issei's smile. Ruby. Issei, hello, what are you doing here? Maybe you weren't in your club. Issei. Yes, I just got out of there, I just decided to leave earlier since I finished the business I had. Ruby. Who will Issei, hey, now that we are here I want you to meet my friends, they are Yang, Blake and Weiss. Yang. Hello, how are you? I want to tell you that that cake you made today was fantastic. Blake. Hey, I think the same as Yang, it was very delicious, you should open a baking shop, lots of people. Weiss. Good afternoon, my name is Weiss. I want to tell you that your cake was good, although it wasn't a big deal. Ruby. I want you to forgive Weiss a little, she spent time in Europe as a transfer, so let's say she has that attitude of nobility, and is a bit sundier with the things she likes, and she doesn't want to accept it. She said whispering to Issei. Issei. Ah okay, anyway, girls, it's a pleasure to meet you even though we are classmates and thank you for your opinions about my dessert. Yang. Hey Issei, now that we are in confidence, I can ask you a question. Issei. Of course there are no problems. Yang. I want to know what is the reason for your change this year, I mean we all know what you were like before, and even if you show that you changed everyone has the doubt of why. Blake. Yang that's something private you should not meddle into others' lives. Issei. Don't worry, the vice president of the class is not the first to tell me this, besides Aika, so it's not a problem. Ruby. Seriously, it doesn't bother you Issei. Issei. Don't worry, as you all know the teachers only call me by my name since before this year started I had certain problems with my family, and by their decision, they took me out of the family and the house, so basically I live alone now, technically I don't have a last name, so because of that, I'm now making do with only the income I've been collecting so far. Yang. I'm sorry if I made you remember something you didn't want to. Issei. I already told you not to bother, I don't care about that now, besides, what are you going to do now? Weiss. We were thinking of spending some time downtown since we left early. Ruby. I know how about you come with us Issei so we can get to know each other better. Issei. Hum I don't know I wouldn't bother you, I mean you are going on a friend's outing, and I don't want to bother you. Blake. Don't worry, we also need someone to carry the things we bought. Yang. If you consider it a sign that we believe you are someone trustworthy, we would also like to talk to you a little more. Ruby. Come on Issei, say yes. Issei. Ha ah, good but just for a while I have to go prepare my dinner. Girls. Yes, they said, jumping for joy. Our group proceeded to go to the center, having a great time with everyone and getting to know each other better, the brunette managed to show the new facet that he has to the quartet of friends, making them all start to see him with interest due to the attitude he had with them. They say. Ha ha ha, it was fun girls. Blake. Yes ha ha who knew you were good, that rhyme battle was incredible who knew you could rap that fast. Ruby. Yes ha ha it was really fun today you say. Yang. We should do it more often, what do you think, Weiss? Weiss. I accept it, it was really fantastic today, but don't think you can make him have you and still overestimate Issei. Issei. Hey you really aren't Sunday as they told me. Weiss. I am not Sunday Ran who was the one who told you. She said, looking at her friends who became tense. Issei. Haha, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal anymore, well, girls, where you live, I'll accompany you. Yang. Don't worry Issei, we all live together, we rent an apartment near the street after the square. Issei. Which square is near the bridge? Ruby. Yes there after the intersection, why? Issei, I live two blocks away haha, <laughs> who would have thought that we practically live next door to each other. Blake. Wow that's convenient we should meet one of these days, and having a meeting doesn't seem like it. Issei. Of course, because don't wait, I'll write you my address in case you want to visit me. He said writing on a piece of paper and giving it to the girls. Well we should go and tomorrow we still have classes. They all proceeded to leave, but not before Issei accompanied them to the door of his apartment and said goodbye. Issei. It was fun today. Karama. That's if you forget the fact that if Sekvara and Leisha know that you went out with other girls before they left you like a battered bongo from all the hits they gave you, it was fun. Issei. 
Damn I forgot about that now that I'm going to do this, it won't save me. He said while turning pale. Drama. Calm down, just explain to them that they left as a group of classmates friends after the academy. They say. You're right, well damn hurry we have to prepare dinner before they arrive. Karama. You already said it quickly, I'm hungry. They say. I wonder where all that food goes in that body of yours, that's supernatural. Karama. Believe me, you wouldn't want to know. They both started running towards their home when there were a few blocks left, the brunette stops and starts looking everywhere just like Karama. They say. Did you feel the Karama? Karama. If someone is following us, go to that alley. Issei heads towards that alley and looks out trying to see who was following him. Karama. Calm down, it seems that he already left, I don't feel his presence, it seems that when we realized he decided to escape. Issei. Whoever had been, I felt that I was not a normal person, it must be that the factions will be watching me. Karama. I don't think so based on what you told me and what I could see of them that day, they don't have the same presence of any race. Issei. What do you mean Karama? Karama. That it was not one of the races that we know, it was something more as if it were an entity or something that can camouflage its presence quite a bit. They say. I don't know what it is, I just know that I'm in their sights, and if it's discreet enough to run away so I don't discover it, it must be very important that I don't discover them. Karama. We must be more careful from now on, probably in the future we will discover who it was, or if there are more than one. They say. Yes, it will be better to be more careful from now on, we better retreat quickly. Karama. Use that to leave without them knowing where we live in case they are watching from afar. They say. Okay hold on. He said drying his eyes changing them to the others. Kamui. They both appeared in the living room of the house. They say. Karama secures the area while I see if anything changed here, I don't want to have unexpected visitors. Karama nodded and went out the window to check the area, while Issei created a barrier to protect the house. Minutes later. They say. Well, the house is now secure, only the people I let in will enter, I wonder who or who are those people who are watching me. He said while he started to think about possible people who were watching him. Karama. Ready, check the area and don't detect anything, possibly no one followed us. They say. Well we have to be careful, we don't know who is after me, but we have to know who I am, so possibly it is either a survivor of the Del Cow's brigade or someone who follows in their footsteps. Karama. When the girls arrive you should alert them to this, if they follow you sooner or later they might know that the two of them know you. They say. You're right, but at the moment we can't do anything, we don't have information, so let's put that aside and see what happens, we must become stronger, something is approaching, and I may possibly get involved. Karama. Well said, it would be better to prepare for whatever it is, but now there is something important to do before that. I'm serious. They say. What a thing. He said equally seriously. Karama. Prepare dinner, I'm hungry. For a while the squeals of some animal could be heard in Issei's house. The people passing by only thought that one of the house owner's pets had made some kind of baton to hit him like that. Moments later you could see the brunette preparing dinner and a Karama all covered in blood on the floor. Issei. That's what happens to you for saying that nonsense at that moment, as it occurs to you, I thought you had something more on the subject. Karama. I'm sorry, it's that walking around the area made me hungry. Issei. Fine this time I let you go, but next time you won't eat all day, you understand. Karama. Yes sir. He said in a military pose. They say. Well, the girls won't be long in arriving. And as if fate had planned it, they both appeared in the room. Sikvera. Honey, we're back from the meeting. Aisha. Yes, we have many things to tell you where you are. They say. I'm in the kitchen preparing dinner, dears. They both went like that and hugged her as well as kissed him. They say. As it went, they didn't try to do anything to them. Aisha. Don't worry, there was only one or two problems, but more than that, it was more important to talk about the creatures that are appearing. They say. And they know where they come from. Sikvera. Yes, it was talked about there, but before telling you, we can have dinner first. They say. Of course, let me prepare the table and we'll eat. Aisha. You are the best ice cun. They say. You know that I love you very much, so let me take care of it. After they had dinner, everyone went to the room where Sikvera and Laisha proceeded to tell what was said at the meeting. They say. So those things are artificially created hmm, that only confirms my suspicions that someone else is planning something. Sikvera. Because you say so Issei Kun. They say. When we were returning from being with some friends, Karama and I felt that someone was watching us so we went to an alley, but when we tried to see who it was, it was no longer there, and it also had a presence that I had never seen before, not even Karama recognized it. Laisha. This is worrying so that means that someone else is planning to do something, and those creatures are their army. Sikvera. 
It could be but we don't have much information about whether the creator of those things is the same one who is following Issei, it could be someone else, nothing should be ruled out. Issei. You're right, but seeing how things are going we must become stronger. Aisha. You are planning to help the factions in this. Issei. No, I don't care about them anymore, I don't care that they take care of themselves, on the other hand, if you get involved in this, I will go and save only you, the others don't matter to me. Sekvera. We understand Issei, we know that if something happens to us you will save us from any threat. Issei. Another thing like that nickname you gave me at the meeting Si Chan. He said while smiling at Sekvera. Sekvera. I'm sorry, they wanted to know your name, and since you didn't have any alias I said that so that it will be your nickname when you appear. Issei. He, don't worry, but what inspired you to call me the Monarch of the Abyss? Sekvera. Well, as you know, those eyes of yours make anyone who sees them feel as if they saw an abyss in them, which inspires me. Issei. I see, Bo, that one is bad, in fact I think I will use it from now on. Aisha. Leaving that aside, could you explain to us that you went out with some friends? She said while accentuating the word friends with her hands. Issei turned pale at that question, he had dug his own grave. Issei. He, you see, it's a bit interesting how we got to that, so let me explain yes, he said nervously because of the looks that both of them were giving him. After he explained how he talked to Ruby during the cooking classes, and how on the way out they invited him out to meet you, they were both quite irritated by the fact that they tried what the brunette prepared so after a chat with him, that he had to tell them when he was going out with someone. Everyone was in the room telling each other about their daily lives, but we see Issei with several bruises all over his body, courtesy of his mates who were holding some pans. Issei. Oh, they went a little overboard, don't you think it was just a friend's outing, and Karama was with me so they know not to cheat on her with anyone. Sekvera. That's not the only reason we loved you, but you were also very kind to give them a little bit of the dessert that you prepared for them and not for us. Aisha. How do you think we feel about it? Issei. But I did tell you that I made one especially for you and I have it in the refrigerator. After Issei gave them the cake, leaving them both amazed, they forgave him, so they went to sleep together that night, since they were both apparently still jealous of those girls. The next morning everyone woke up and went to breakfast. When they finished, both girls said goodbye to Issei since he had to go to the academy, and they had to go do their work in the underworld. Issei. Despite now having a more resistant body I still feel his blows. Karama. I told you, they would leave you like a bongo. Issei. I know you were right, so it was true that a jealous woman in love is the most dangerous being you can face. Karama. And you have two on top of you, that's having balls, friend. Issei. I want to see if you say the same thing when you get together. Karama. Aha, don't even believe it, I'm too free to be imprisoned by someone, and I prefer my single life. Issei. That's what we all say at the beginning, well, stay quiet, we're arriving, and Aika and Rumi are waiting for me at the entrance. Aika. Issei here we are. Rumi. You arrived very early Issei, you should come earlier. Issei. I'm sorry yesterday I had a little problem so it was hard for me to get up today. Rumi. What happened to you? You have several scratches and bruises all over your body. Issei. Hey, <laughs> yesterday I had a fight with a couple of people, and I had a fight, but nothing serious, then the problem was solved more or less. He said while remembering the beating his mates gave him. Aika. Are you okay, Issei, do you want us to take you to the infirmary? Issei. Don't worry about anything that a short nap won't solve, by the way we had lunch under the tree in the patio today, because I want to eat outdoors. Rumi. Of course, no problem, that would help you get better. The trio of friends entered the academy to go to their classrooms. But as they were going, Issei saw out of the corner of his eye, that in the corner of the door was Ash next to she was known, but he couldn't recognize her, but he didn't give it importance, it wasn't his problem. As the trio passed by Ash notices the brunette so he goes towards him trying to stop him. Ash. But look who we have here if it's not the useless one who was left by his family and the people he loved the most. He said haughtily, drawing the attention of all the students who were entering. Issei just continued walking alongside Aika and Rumi. Ash. Hey, I'm talking to you so look at me when I do it, you understand. He said as he pushed the two girls away and grabbed him by the shoulder, applying pressure. Issei saw that when he pushed the girls aside, he threw Aika to the floor due to the force he exerted in his push, so he turned around and hit her in the stomach, making him spit forcibly, throwing him to the floor due to the pressure he exerted, then from that he went to help Aika and see if Rumi was okay. Issei. You guys okay? Aika. Don't worry, I'm just a little injured. Rumi. Yes in my case it was just a push so nothing happened to me. Everyone was surprised by what the brunette did, just with one blow he had left the current couple of the student president and her vice president on the floor. 
While this was happening Zenovia and Irina worried about Ash, so they went to help him, when they got closer they saw that he was having trouble breathing. Zenovia. Hey, come here right now, how can you hit one of your classmates at the academy? I want you to come with us to the principal's office so that he can give you your sanction. She said, angry at the fact that he hit his mate. Irina. How can you hit him when he only came up to talk to you? They say. I did it because he dared to push one of my friends to the floor, in addition to looking for a fight, as president you should see that I respect others, before coming to want to blame someone everyone saw it when he pushed them, we have a lot of people besides teachers that are present. Everyone started talking, agreeing with him, he had asked for it, in addition to hurting both girls, everyone was saying that because he was his mate, the student council defended him. More and more murmurs had gotten both girls angry. Zenovia. I don't know what you're talking about, I just saw that he approached you and you responded violently, so come with me or you'll be punished. Before she could continue speaking someone intervened. Let's see, enough with this, you are using your position to defend this young man who, from what I see, is your mate, so you better start using it right away, otherwise it will be withdrawn at the next meeting that we teachers have. Everyone turned around and the person who spoke saw a teacher. Zenovia. TCH, will everyone go to your classrooms, they are about to start. Everyone proceeded to leave while the council took Ash to the infirmary. They say. Thank you teacher for helping us. No problem, just try not to get into any more trouble, yes. Aika. Yes teacher. Rumi. Thank you, those council members think they can rule everyone as if they were kings. They say, what's your name miss? At another time you will know that they should leave and classes have started. The trio saw that no one was there besides ringing the bell, so they said goodbye and went to their classrooms. You will soon hear from my young man, don't worry. He said while smiling sweetly, thus heading in the direction to see an old friend. During the day the trio was calm, there were no more problems. When classes ended the three headed to their club rooms to do their activities. They say. Well Karama went home because he was bored so I'm alone, I think I should record another song, but which one, I should upload one a little more energetic, one that gives off that feeling of power. I already know which one would be perfect. He said checking his notebook. Well let's start. Well, it looks great, now let's upload it. After he uploaded it, he reviewed the two previous songs he had uploaded, being surprised by the number of people who began to follow him, in addition to the likes he received. They say. Haha I think I'm pretty good at this. When he finished his things he left, meeting Aika and Rumi at the exit, who had also finished their club tasks, so they left together talking about what they did with his say, teaching them his songs that he uploaded so far, which they both liked. With Aika offering to do an interview with a small presentation of her music which he said would think better about it later. Underworld. Gremory House, Rhea's room. All of Ash's girls were sleeping because they recently had a passionate moment with him, but if we look closely we see that he was not with them, but was in the bathroom vomiting blood back. Ash. Ag damn bastard his blows left me very weak if it weren't for this amulet they would already know who I am, I must be more careful thanks to it, my time was reduced a lot, I only have days left before I collapse, I swear that if I manage to find out who you are, he will take revenge on me next to the bitch of gares, and then that bastard to say. After wiping the corner of his mouth he headed to the bed, but then he saw that most of the girls were awake eager to continue their cuddling sessions. Ash. At least I'll be able to enjoy this a little more before they discover me. He thought as he left with the intention of enjoying this more. Who Academy. Lunch time. Issei was having lunch with Aika and Rumi when he feels someone touch his back, so he turns to see who it was, seeing Ruby and her friends who came with their lunches. Ruby. Sorry Issei, but we can sit here because there are no more tables available, besides being the only one here we trust. Issei turned to look at the others seeing that they didn't care so he responded. Issei. Sure, no problem. When he said that, the four friends proceeded to sit in front, but what Issei didn't notice, was that both Aika and Rumi were looking seriously at the four girls, and they were also looking seriously at them. Issei. Girls, how have you been these days? Yang. Well the truth is, just because the winter seasons are approaching we were thinking about what clothes we should bring, since it is demanding with what we should wear. Issei. Yes, it's true that we are already close to autumn, how time flies. He said while closing his eyes and smiling, remembering the cold rainy nights in which he was with Sekvera when they met, what he didn't know is that the girls were watching his smile of tranquility, in which you could see the peace he had, earning a few blushes from them. Weiss. Hey Issei. Issei came to when he heard Weiss talking to him. Issei. Yes, sorry, I remembered something, what do you need? Weiss. Well, as you know, in a few days it will be a long weekend due to the long weekend holiday, and I was wondering if you would like to spend it with us in a cabin in the woods that belongs to my father, obviously I have permission from him so there is no problem. Aika and Rumi became alert to this. 
Not only do they know others who are interested in Issei, but they invited him to go with them to a lonely cabin in a forest where who knows what would happen. Issei. Well, I don't know, I can invite two more people because right now I'm living with two people who are usually with me, they're always my family. Weiss. If there's no problem, it's not just us, but there will be four more friends besides us. Issei. Well, I'll see what they decide, and then I'll tell them yes. Blake. Okay just let us know when you know if they're coming. Ruby. And what do you think? He said while addressing Rumi and Aika. Aika. Unfortunately I can't those days, I'll go see my grandmother with my family. Rumi. I happen to also have a family dinner so I won't be able to attend. Yang. Don't worry, there will be more opportunities to meet later. They say. Well, I'll leave you girls, I have to go to the bathroom. He said as he stood up and went to the bathrooms like that. They all watched as Issei left, and when he was no longer there they stared at each other. Aika. Well now that he's gone we can talk. Rumi. From what we see we are not the only ones interested in him so we will clarify things here. Ruby. That seems just right to me. Weiss. Let's decide how we will fight for him. They all decided that they will fight for the brunette's love, so they reached an agreement to do their best, so that the brunette chooses them. Aika. Now that we are rivals I must say that he is in a relationship now, so we are not the only ones we have to fight for him. What Ika said surprised the others, who decided to find out who the brunette was currently like. Blake. Maybe he's one of the people he'll go with us. Yang. It could be because if you remember, he doesn't have a biological family now, so he possibly lives with her. They were all talking about what to do to get the brunette to introduce them to his current mate. But before she continued speaking they saw Issei approaching, so they decided to stop the talk for now. Say, Well girls, what do you want to do while we wait for the next class? Ruby. Uh, uh can I ask you something else? Say, He yes Ruby Chan. Ruby. It's true that you sang several songs in addition to the one Ika has live. She said blushing at the suffix he gave her. Say, Yes, I even created an account where I upload my songs that I compose. Yang. And since it's your name, I'll follow you while I listen to your songs. Say, Of course, I'll show you my account. He said, giving him the cell phone in the profile where he uploads his songs. They want to listen to the two new ones I have. They all nodded. Well let's go first with this a song for you. When the first song finished, everyone was blushing thinking about Issei dedicating the song to them. Issei. Well now this one is a little stronger resistance. When it finished, everyone was surprised by the meaning of the song and not only them, but also the other students who heard the songs, earning several shouts of excitement for the second song from the men, and several sighs from the girls for the first song. They say. Hey oops I think I put it too high. Before anyone said anything the dining room speaker rang. Young Issei please report to the office. Everyone looked at Issei thinking that he did something. They say. It must be because of what happened the other day when I hit that bastard, well I guess I have to go I'll see you later girls at the exit. He said leaving while waving goodbye. The girls proceeded to continue their discussion about Issei's mate. Issei was at the door of the office. Issei. To call me, if you had been because of the fight I had at the entrance it had been yesterday, well it doesn't hurt to think about it now, so let's see what happens. He said to himself as he proceeded to enter. When he was inside, he noticed that there was no one else there, which confused him a little, but before he asked if anyone was there, the desk chair turned, seeing a woman who was sitting staring at him. I suppose you know why you came today, right? They say. Yes, director, I would think it was because of the fight I had yesterday at entrance no. Principal. And you assume well, as you know some teachers were present. At the scene I have their testimonies, but I wanted to hear it from the person involved, you understand. Giving him a smile that embarrassed to say. They say. I understand director, you see I was entering that day with my classmates when he approached and pushed them abruptly, to which I reacted violently when I saw that he had knocked Ika to the floor, so I hit him in the stomach and went to help. The my friends, when the council intervened wanting to punish me for doing that without taking into account what he did, but a teacher just appeared and calmed the situation. Principal. I understand, I hope nothing like that happens again, and to make sure, I will warn the council not to abuse its power again, you have my word as director. They say. Thank you, director, with your permission, if you don't want to know anything else, I'll leave my next class. Principal. You can leave young and be careful. The say proceeded to leave since the problem was solved. Principal. Even though they took away his powers, he is still strong enough to send that guy flying with one blow, what do you think, your sister? Out of the shadows comes a woman wearing teacher's clothes. 
Yes, it could be said that he is still strong, but I feel something else in him, another energy that seems familiar to me. But due to all the movements that there are now due to the attacks that happen in the supernatural, I don't have time to find out. Principle. He has a strong spirit if what happened to him did not knock him down, he has the soul of a warrior to continue. Yes, he reminds me of a young man I met a long time ago. The woman speak remembering a certain blonde-haired man she met many years ago. They both saw each other and continued with their things while they thought about Issei. Moments later after classes ended Issei decided to go home early since today the girls had business in the underworld, so it would take a few days before they returned. Issei took advantage of those days to train, since he needed to prepare for what was coming, and he didn't want to stay stagnant. He had managed to improve his obtained abilities and their use time, but he still couldn't use his eyes for a long time despite training them, he assumed that it had to have a strong impact on his being to unlock it completely, so he left it aside, instead he began to develop a new technique based on the pulse with which he sent Shiva flying that day, which he named Shinra Tensei. It took him a few days to complete what he wanted. He had managed to channel the air pressure into a sphere with which he surrounded it with his chakra and baptized it Rasengan. Although it was difficult for him to form the sphere, thanks to Kurama, he was able to complete it, but he believed that he could improve it or evolve it even more, so he worked hard at it. Although I would be training for the rest of the day I had not been able to evolve it, but if I improved it now I could make it bigger to the sphere, but it required a lot of concentration to do so, so I would only use the Mega Rasengan at extreme moments. Issei. Ugh that was very exhausting, but it can improve it for now. Kurama. If you were able to create and improve a new technique in just two days, you are progressing rapidly with your power, but you must be careful, remember the consequences of demanding too much from your body. They say. Yes, don't remind me, but this technique is very powerful. Not only does it serve as a pushing method for enemies, but it causes serious internal damage. If I put enough pressure on it, I could easily kill with it. Karama. You should be careful with that, it's a pretty dangerous technique, you should be careful when you use it. They say. Yes I have to be very careful when you use it. They both agreed that it was a very dangerous technique. After finishing their training, they both went inside their house to bathe and prepare their lunch, in addition to waiting for the girls to arrive from work. When Issei finished cooking, the girls arrived, although they were a little dirty from the problems they had. They say. Girls, what happened to you? Did the leaders do something against you? Sikvera. No Issei we just had a confrontation against those creatures again. Aisha. Yes, but this time they were much stronger, in addition to using magical power like us, it seems that they are improving with each fight they have. They say. Well, go take a shower and then we'll have lunch. They both nodded and went to shower, when they came back they ate together. They say. Well, girls, I see that you are very tired, so how about spending a few days of rest in a cabin in the forest with other people who invited us? Sikvera. I think it's a good idea. We need a break from this. They also gave us a few days to rest since they had some things to plan for us leaders. Aisha. But who are the ones who invited us because from what I know you only know your old friends who I doubt invited us and those girls you went out with before. She said a little seriously making Issei get a little nervous. Issei. They were the ones who invited me, and they gave me the opportunity to invite them, since some of their friends were also going haha, <laughs> but I think it would be nice to go to the forest and spend it together, so I told them that I would ask them before, and since they have free time I thought you would like it. Sikvera. Later we will talk about accepting proposals from others before asking each other, but I think it is an excellent idea, we should go. Everyone agreed to go to have fun, so the next day Issei told the girls that they were going to the cabin. That weekend so they only had today to prepare. Along with Sikvera and Laisha. The next day Ruby and her friend's apartment. The girls were outside waiting for Issei and his companions, when they saw him in the corner with two girls, who, in their eyes, they noticed were quite fine and highly regarded, which worried them a lot, since one of them was his current mate. Which complicated the plans to conquer it. Issei. Hello girls, how are you, let me introduce you to them. Sikvera. Hello, my name is Sikvera Gares, and I am currently living with Issei. She said arrogantly. Laisha. Hello, I'm Laisha Asterid and I also live with Issei and my friend Sikvera. She said in the same way as Sikvera. After the four friends introduced themselves in a serious and slightly annoyed way because of the way they emphasized the sentence we live with him. After the introductions they proceeded to head towards Weiss's cabin, which was located in the forest a little away from the city near the mountain. When they arrived, everyone got off the bus at the entrance to the forest on the path that leads to the cabin. Issei. Well we have to walk from here so it will be better to leave now before we have to sleep outside. Everyone proceeded to follow the path before nightfall, arriving at a cabin that was very large and beautiful, which was located near a lake in the mountain. Sikvera. 
Wow, it looks very beautiful, and the place is very good and clean. Twice. Yes, it's very pretty. I used to come here with my parents as a child when my grandfather gave it to me as a gift. Yang. Come on guys, make sure the others are inside waiting for us. Everyone proceeded to go inside, meeting a couple of boys and girls who were acquaintances of the four friends. Blake. Guys, it's nice to see you again as you are. He said while hugging the two girls and greeting both boys. Yang. Ha, huh, it was expected that I would do that, I guess, well guys, I want to introduce you to Issei and his companion Sekfara and Laisha. He said pointing to Issei and the girls. Now please introduce yourself. John. Good morning, I'm John Ark. Said the cheerful blonde. Lai. Good afternoon, I'm Lai Ren. The black-haired women said stoically seriously. Nora. Sorry, she's pretty serious with other, I'm Nora Valkyrie, nice to meet you. Said the orange-haired woman while hugging Lai. Pura. If we don't usually hang out with new people, well, I'm Pura Nikos. Nice to meet you, he said, smiling. Issei and the others proceeded to introduce themselves as well, minutes later everyone was outside the cabin around a campfire cooking, well they got to know each other better. John. Hey Issei, I want to ask you something. Issei. Yes it happens. John. It's true that you sing, Ruby told us that she had a great voice, and wanted to know if you could sing a song now if it's not too much trouble. Issei looked at Ruby who looked away and sighed, he fixed his gaze on Sekvera and Laisha who nodded wanting to hear him sing, so Issei reached for his backpack taking out a guitar, but he noticed that there was a small animation seeing him through one of Laisha's bags, then after grabbing his guitar, he returned to the bone fire and sat down, began to tune his instrument and took a deep breath. Earning the complete song of his spectators. Everyone was surprised, but the girls interested in him were blushing because of how he sang. Issei. Well, if you allow me, I'll go to sleep for a while, I need to rest since tomorrow I'll go for a walk around the area, so see you, he said, leaving his room. After a while everyone also retired to rest in individual rooms. But a certain little animal would come out of its hiding place and go to Sekvera's room to sleep without anyone noticing. The next morning everyone woke up except Issei who got up earlier and went out to train a little early. They went down to have breakfast, but Lei and John went to the kitchen and noticed that there was a mess as if someone had been eating there, when they were going to ask. Whoever it was, they heard a pot move so thinking it was some wild animal they went to see, seeing an orange fox sleeping with its belly bulging from eating so much, they quickly closed the pot and called the others. John. Guys, come quickly, we found something here. He shouted calling to the others. I read. Look who was eating our food, he said while opening the pot, seeing a fox. Sekvera and Laisha were surprised to see Kurama there since according to them he stayed to take care of the house. When they were about to ask what to do with the Kurama wakes up and says while rubbing his eyes. Kurama. Good morning Issei, what's for breakfast? Kurama, not hearing any response, opened his eyes, bumping into Issei's friends, excited to see him speak, remembering that he came as a sneak on his trip. Kurama. Damn, he said, covering his ears for what would come next. John suddenly releases the pot, causing Kurama to fall, managing to scare the girls who began to scream, but before he moved, Lei grabbed the pot and trapped him inside, climbing on top of it, so that he wouldn't escape. John. But what the hell is this thing, maybe I'm talking. I read. Rest assured that I am speaking, but how can it be possible? Nora. We should call the authorities, we don't know what that could be. Yang. To the authorities, we should not call the army to study it. Everyone gave their opinion while Sekvera and Laisha thought about what to do. Kurama. Please let go, I swear I'm not bad, I won't do anything to you, but don't let them take me, they'll kill me to dissect me, and I'm too young to die yet, he said, sobbing because of what was in store for him. Ruby. That thing keeps talking we do. Seeing that everyone was scared, Sekvera decides to intervene. Sekvera. Calm down first, I read, can you please release it? Weiss. Like letting it go we don't know what it is. Laisha. Don't worry, we know he's a friend of Issei and ours, so he won't do anything to them. Blake. They kind of know him. Sekvera. Ha I guess we owe you an explanation so leave it and we'll tell you everything yeah. The boys looked at each other and accepted, releasing Kurama who jumped on top of Laisha. Kurama. Thanks for saving me Ladi I thought for a moment that they would eat me. Laisha. Kurama, everything is fine, but what are you doing here? Kurama. I just didn't want to be left alone so I sneaked through your things to come with you. Pura. You could explain to us what's happening and how that thing can talk. Sekvera. Fine but first do you believe in the supernatural? I read. With that thing here I'm starting to believe it. Sekvera. His name is Kurama, but if we say that races like devils and angels exist, even the gods, we belong to the supernatural. Yang. In what sense? I would say scared. Laisha. We are devils. 
he said, taking out his wings just like Sekfera. Everyone was surprised and scared. Sekfera. Don't worry, we won't do anything to them. They both proceeded to explain everything related to her, including how they got their entourage and their ranks. Ruby. Let's see if we understood, you can transform people to serve you under a set of chess pieces. Aisha. Exactly. Yang. So Issei is a dear of yours I guess. Sekfera. No, in your case it is a little more complicated. Weiss. Kind of complicated. They both proceeded to explain Issei's life and how he fraud against those who faced him, how he was badly injured and how they betrayed him, becoming human again and how they met. Everyone was surprised and sad about what Issei had to experience. I read. Wow, he had too many things to live through when he was young. The four friends were sobbing for the brunette, they knew that he had certain problems, but they didn't think it was deeper than what the brunette told them before. While everyone was thinking about it, Issei enters the house upon returning from his walk in the forest and his training. Issei. What's wrong with them because everyone is so sad? He said confused. Suddenly Ruby and her friends stand up from their seats and go to hug him while crying. Issei. Well, what's happening here? He said even more confused. Tsukfara proceeds to talk to him about how they knew everything about him and the supernatural. Issei. How did you find out about that? Aisha. Well let's say that a certain little animal had to do with it. Stepping aside showing Kurama who was sitting lowering his head. Kurama. I'm sorry, I didn't want to stay alone, plus I wanted to be with you here where my place in nature is. Issei. Okay, then you tell me how you got here, calm down girls, don't worry, remember that I told you that it didn't bother me anymore, because some people helped me get over it. He said, hugging her and seeing his new family. Ruby. You are too strong Issei I can't believe everything you had to go through. Issei. Already, now. It took them a few minutes to calm down before they released him. Issei. Well I guess you know me better now so I'll answer any questions you have. Blake. Now that you would be Issei, according to them you lost your dragon essence. Issei. Now I am completely human although I have greater power than I had before. Weiss. Then you are human, that means that now you no longer have any relationship with the supernatural. Issei. Yes and no, even though I no longer interact with them, I am still involved in Yang. Like what? Issei. As you know, the devils are polygamous, so I guess they know what I mean by that. John. No, that part is still a little confusing. Issei. Well what I want to say is that I am in a relationship with Sekvera and Leisha right now. Since like hell they agreed to share me. Everyone was shocked by this, especially the four girls who had feelings for the brunette. It took them a while to digest this. Wow and I thought that they were just acquaintances. Ruby, Yang, Weiss and Blake were angry because not only was there romantic interest in a relationship, but it was with two people at the same time. Karama saw the girl's looks and knew that something would happen, so he spoke trying to calm the situation down. Karama. Pot is seek maybe if we go and prepare breakfast while the girls talk a little more, they should accompany us John and I read since we don't know the place very well. The boys saw each other and nodded, going to the kitchen, but not before Karama said something to Sekvera. Karama. Sikvera, the main female always puts order among the others, remember that. He said, leaving with the other boys. They all heard that, understanding it immediately. Sikvera. Well I guess we should talk about this since I see that you are interested in my essay, so let's start while they are away. Aisha. Remember that Sikvera does not belong to you alone. We'll just be listening, said Nora and Pura. Issei and the boys were in the kitchen preparing breakfast while the girls talked. Issei. Well, Karama, because of this, I suppose that from now on you will be more careful, no. She said with a spoon in her hand to a Karama who was scared. Karama. I'm sure I'll be more careful from now on, I swear on my nine tails. He said nervously because of how Issei was swinging the ladle. Lei and John were laughing at the scene, since they didn't think that a supernatural animal could be so afraid of a simple spoon. Issei. Well, I guess that's enough. For now, and well guys, I'm sorry if this bothers you, I know we don't know each other that well, well at least I don't know you, but it must be too much to find out about all this. Both young people saw each other and talked. I read. You don't have to worry Say, it's true that we barely know each other, but leaving your story aside, we can see that you are a kind-hearted person. John. It's true, even though you suffered all that, you didn't let yourself be defeated by it, you got up and moved on, without seeking any revenge against them despite what they did to you, that's being a good person, that's why we trust you, because if you don't feel resentment for what they did to you, it is obvious that you are someone someone can lean on and trust. I read. Wow I didn't think you were so deep John, since you are always absent-minded and kind of careless. John. Hey, I know I'm quite lively and sometimes childish, but I know when it's time to be serious. Issei. 
Hahaha <laughs> thanks guys for this, but I think we should hurry up otherwise the girls might get angry, and believe me, you don't want to see them angry, I already experienced it with Sekvera and Laisha, and they weren't very nice to say the least. I read. We better hurry then I don't want to get killed. John nodded with a shudder. Well with the girls. Sekvera. Well, as you all know, right now both Laisha and I are in a relationship with Issei, right now we are the ones who gradually took him out of the state he was in after that, and we have both decided to share it. Laisha. Exactly but even though we didn't like the idea, we knew that there would be more girls interested in him besides us, his way of being is very attractive, in addition to being an excellent person. Sekvera. That's why we have decided to allow him a harem, but we would first test those interested to know if they really love him, since we will not allow them to deceive him again or use him like they did. Aisha. But you should know that if you decide to be with him, you will not be able to betray or deceive him. We promised that if someone played back with his feelings, we would take care of her, so. What do you plan to do with a say? You will be with him in any adversity that occurs. Present, they will support him and most importantly they will love him with all their hearts in exchange he will open his heart to them and give them his love and affection, so what do you plan to do? They both looked at the four friends who saw each other and nodded, all standing up. Ruby. I think you know what we will say so I will simplify it, I speak for myself and my friends when I say that we will be with him whatever happens, and we will show him how much we love him, no matter who tries to separate us or get in the way, we will always be with him. Yang. As Ruby said, we will be there when he needs us, and it doesn't matter who wants to get in the way or what happens. Blake. Exactly, we will fight to be with him since we want to be part of his heart and feel the love he gives us. Weiss. Although it is true that before he was very different, now he has changed due to everything that happened, but I can say that despite all that he did not lose that charisma that he had, and that desire to protect that characterizes him, thanks to the fact that they told us everything. What he lived and why he fraught until he was badly injured, shows the type of person he is, if with some companions he is that protective and affectionate, I want to try what it would be like to be now his mate and life mate, even if I have to share it, I know that he loved us all. Equally, so let's hope they let us be with him and help him know what true love is. Both devils looked at each other and smiled at the girl's words. They knew that even though they didn't know him well, they were falling in love with his way of being, so they nodded and turned around like this to the group of friends. Sekvera. Well we have seen their intentions and feelings that they have like this, so we give them permission to be with us. Aisha. I hope you will help us show our mate how much we love him, so we welcome you to this group of harem sisters. The four girls smiled at this and hugged each other. After this they proceeded to get to know each other more and ask certain things about the supernatural. Moments later the boys arrived with breakfast which they all began to eat while talking about their lives and events they experienced. When they finished Sekvera called to say. Sekvera. Issei Kun, there is something we wanted to tell you. You can listen for a moment. We have something important to discuss. Issei. What's wrong Si Chan? Aisha. Well, as you know, when we started being a couple we decided that you would have a harem, and we would see if they were the right ones for you, so I think we have more mates. Issei was shocked by what they told him, so he turned to see who they were, and before speaking, he was typed by the four friends who kissed him. Sekvera and Laisha, although they accepted them, became a little jealous of what the four friends did, so they went to separate them from Issei and helped him get up. Issei. Well, I honestly didn't expect this, but it's true that as we spent time together I grew fond of all of them, so if they agree to love me, I love and care for them equally, so I hope they put up with me against the stupid things I do. She said giving a warm smile that captivated the four friends and Sekvera and Laisha, while the others looked surprised at the scene, and two girls began to think about proposing to their love interests that they were watching before they were stolen. After that everyone went to have fun at the lake, making a fishing camp on the side of the boys and Kurama, and the girls played some games, in addition to betting on certain things those who were with Issei. Everyone had fun during the days they were there, but one day before returning Issei called Kurama and told him to follow him when he was going to train in the forest, since he wanted to show him something. Kurama. Ah, why did you ask me to follow you so early, don't you see that I'm sleepy? He said while yawning. Issei. I have something very interesting that I found when I was walking around, and I wanted you to see it, since I thought you would know what it was. Kurama. And what is it, it takes a long time to get there. Issei. Not much is a few minutes away from here so let's go quickly. After a while, both of them arrived at a cave which surprised Kurama because of the strong energy it gave off, but it was not from any being, since it was an energy different from living beings. Kurama. This energy is very strong and pure, but it is not from some being, but rather it is more as if it were some object when you found it since I probed the area, and I did not feel it until it was very close. Issei. 
During my walk I began to feel a force that resonated with my energy, so I followed that feeling, and it led me here, but I didn't want to enter, since I didn't know what it was. Karama. And we hope it could be some interesting object like a weapon or something like that. He said heading to the cave, being followed by Issei. They walked around the place for a while until they saw Flash seeing this. They were both surprised, they were crystals that overflowed with raw power. Issei. Well, I didn't expect this, although it's incredible how many of them there are because they give off immense power. Karama. Be careful Issei, these crystals are very volatile, since they are composed of very raw energy to absorb or use. Issei. Do you know what they are? Karama. If I have lived long enough to know what they caused, it is a crystal composed of energy, when they found it they wanted to use it as a source of power, but it was too volatile to control it, only a few were able to use it without being destroyed by it, but for more than a millennium, since no more of them were found. It was deduced that they were formed over time, but they were never able to discover why it was difficult to form. Before, it used to appear in the underworld, but after the great war they had there, they exploded it, and it was no longer found. Finding how it was too volatile for use, they began to use it as what you know as a bomb, the force it could accumulate was so much that it was capable of destroying an entire city with a simple piece of it. Issei. But when I was there I never read anything like that because it wasn't mentioned if it was a weapon. Karama. When they stopped being found, it was thought that they had spent everything, and that only the four original devil kings and god knew of their existence, which they never revealed, only a few species knew of their existence, mine is one of them, we despite knowing of its existence we never used it, since we tried firsthand what happens when we try it. Issei. Wait, if your species knew it, that was one of the factors why they were hunted by the other races. Karama. If that was one of them, it was also the fact that we could in a certain way create power nuclei with them, but when we knew what they wanted to do with them, we escaped and hid. Thanks to the fact that both the devil kings and the gods perished, we were able to be in peace, since they were the only ones who knew about them. They say. Wow, they must have been a great tool to hunt them down for it. Karama. Since you don't know, it was the best way to confront the enemy without wearing out the number of troops. They say. But if they knew how to create things with them, why didn't they use them against them? Karama. As I said, they were too volatile to use, only a certain hard mineral could contain their power, but unfortunately it is too scarce to find. Issei. But how could I control it? Karama. Since the crystal gives off power, I need something that will absorb that energy to be able to use it a little. After many attempts, the perfect mineral was found for them since it absorbed energy and stored it. Issei. What is the name of that mineral? Karama. Caridium was the name, but it was stopped being searched for a long time ago. It used to be found in areas of extreme temperatures. They say. Wow, it would be better not to come back. Karama. We better go back, we can't do anything without the Caridium, let's leave it until we know how to use them in case of an emergency. But that said they both returned to the cabin. Everyone was waiting to return to the city since they had classes again tomorrow, but then Ruby and the others stood in front of Issei, Sekfara and Laisha. Ruby. Guys we wanted to ask you something before we come back. John. We want you to let us enter your nobility, please. The three looked at each other, doubtful of whether to accept or not. They say. Guys, are you sure of this, you know what I suffered, I know that Sekvara and Laisha are not like that, but that doesn't mean the others will be judged for being servants, and they may be provoked. Weiss. Do you think we'll allow them to belittle us just like that? If they want to fight, they'll have to confront us all, so don't doubt that anyone who wants to be too clever should prepare to fight. Yang. You said it yourself, dangerous things are coming, we must be stronger, and only in this way are we sure that we will know that we are all prepared. Issei looked at the others and gave a sigh, he knew that what he could know about them wouldn't change their minds, since they were stubborn. Issei. Well I guess it will be fine, but you will have to choose who to be with, Sekvera or Laisha. Everyone started to think about it, and they agreed that Ruby and Weiss would go with Sekvera, along with John and Nora, while Yang and Blake would go with Laisha along with Lei and Pur. Both proceeded to give them their pieces and reincarnate them into their servants. But that said, they began to tell them the essentials about what they should do when being as an entourage. With that said everyone returned home to rest. The next day. They were all together walking around the academy while they were talking. They say. Who would have thought that you would conveniently change schools, but why didn't you tell us? In fact we didn't know that this was the academy our parents transferred us to. But it must have been the work of someone other than Weiss. Everyone looked at her with doubt, making her a little nervous. Weiss. Well, you should thank me for convincing my parents to tell theirs to put them in the same school as us, so we're all together in case something happens. She said angrily. They say. Well that's true, thanks to that we can watch each other's backs in case something happens, it was very clever of you, dear. He said a little mischievously so that she would stop being angry. 
Weiss. Don't think I did it to flatter me or something like that. She said half blushing, trying to sound serious. Suddenly at Sundeer was heard from behind making everyone laugh, while Weiss looked for who said that. Weiss. John you better run because if you don't I will leave you worse than a pinata. She said as she chased him causing more laughter to the others, and I thought about where the John who had previously spoken seriously was left. I read. I would like it to be more like when we were in the kitchen, he said disappointed. After saving him, everyone continued on their way where they separated, as they had to go present the papers before the four entered. Issei and Ruby were in the classroom with the others when the teacher entered, saying that they would have new classmates. Where John and the others entered, after introducing themselves they went to sit down to start classes. Unknown location. Abandoned castle secret base. Damn, even if I continue to improve, my creatures still cannot use the powers that we obtained, I have to find a way to create one that can withstand and use those powers, but since the vessels are too weak to fully support it and the factions, they eliminate them one after another. Don't worry, professor, your creations are fulfilling their missions, so far they serve to distract the factions, you just have to look for a sample that is capable of withstanding the powers and create the beasts with them, as well as the generals to whom you gave the sample. Of blood are quite useful. Professor. Speak for yourself, remember that I do not like to create fail things even if they do their job, I seek to create the perfect weapon that can defeat those bastards of the factions and show them that they should not have messed with my race at the time. Soon you will be able to achieve your objective, we just need to prepare more for now let's worry about making the generals obtain more power for when it is time to show ourselves. Professor. Sure, Mr. Victor, but you don't think what they have is enough. Victor. Believe me, they are still not enough to confront them. They both sought wealth people training with their powers behind the display case, four girls and four men, and four humanoid beasts. With RSA, he was currently in his music room alone, since the others went with Sekvara and Laisha, since they had to present themselves to the patriarchs of their families, in addition to creating weapons that were appropriate to them, and as a prevention of something. I accompany Karama to make sure nothing happens. Issei. He didn't know what to do so he decided to take a walk, since no one was open at home besides him, so he gathered his things and left. At the exit he saw two people who were there who made signs for him to come closer, he, a little doubtful, began to see better who they were, they were Ika and Rumi who were leaving, and they saw him by chance. They say. Hey girls, what happened that you are leaving so early, did your clubs close earlier? Ika. Yes, we were too tired to do any work, so we decided to leave earlier. Rumi. Yes, because the teachers didn't have much to do, they told me that I shouldn't help them, so I left and met up with Ika. I say. Well, how about we go out somewhere? Ika. Maybe you're inviting us out, Issei Kun, she said very flirtatiously. Rumi. At this she blushed because she imagined herself on a date with a brunette. I say. Maybe, can these two beautiful damsels accompany me on a walk? He said, playing along even though something happened. Both Ika and Rumi were so red that it looked like they were steaming. A while later we see the three walking through the center, although Issei looked a little hurt, because both of them hit him after calming down. Issei. I understand about Rumi, but because you also hit me, Aika, if you were the one who started it. Aika. You shouldn't play with that, Issei, especially with a woman. Rumi. Exactly, you should know when to say those things. After that practice the trio proceeded to walk around looking and buying things and having fun together, until it was time for them to return home. First, Rumi's was closer where they left her and they headed towards Ika's, when they arrived they said goodbye with a hug, and Issei was going to kiss him on the cheek, but in that moment Ika grabbed him by the cheeks and planted a kiss on him. Which lasted a few seconds, when they separated, Ika looked down and said. Ika. If we had more time I would show you everything about me while you taught me how to feel like a woman, but we don't have time left so goodbye. She said as she went inside and closed the door and lay down behind it. Issei was stunned by what happened and listened but he was getting late, so he turned around and left while thinking about what happened. Issei. I'm dead if they find out. He thought scared and happy about what happened. Underworld. Mansion of the Agares family. Sekvera and her entourage were training their new weapons, while Leisha and the others rested. Leisha. Who would think that they would get used to their new abilities and weapons too quickly? Sekvera. Yes, for the common case it would take at least a week, but they were faster, they have a future if they continue like this. A while later everyone was resting while Ruby listened to music until she passed one that she liked and saw its name, surprising her. Ruby. Girls come quickly. When they heard her, they all came closer. Weiss. What happened Ruby for you to call us that? Ruby. Look at this song. Yang. That's just why you called us. Ruby. Don't look who sang it. They all saw that it was Issei, and were even more surprised that it was on the platform of the supernatural. Blake. But how is this here? 
From what we know, the supernatural cut all connection with it. Sekvera. Don't be scared, that's because everything that happens in the human world is always transmitted in the supernatural, from programs to music. I'm sure they transmitted it to me because of the support it had in the human world, but look here at the booing in the comments. Ruby. Well, let's listen to how it is first. He said, playing the music. They were all fascinated by Issei's way of singing and his way of expressing himself in the song. Aisha. Wow, he looked great, no. Blake. It was very good, especially that part where the chorus begins. Just then everyone hears someone knocking on the door of the training room. Lady Agares. Daughter, a letter arrived from the mass and the council for you and here is the queen of Laisha, also with another for her. Sikvera. Come in. Both Lady Agares and the Rose entered with an envelope in their hands with the seal of the council and the mass. Laisha. What do you think is Sikvera? Sikvera. Maybe some meeting or mission. They both proceeded to open the envelopes under everyone's watchful eye. Sikvera. Eris Agares is informed that within a week there will be the promotion assembly where she will be promoted to an elite class devil, along with Rias Gremory, Ash Barbados, Sona Citri and Laisha Astherit, and they will be granted titles of title, we await your presence. Laisha. How strange. Nora. Because you say so Laisha. Lady Agares. What this means is that since my daughter opposed the marriage they arranged by going with the one who hurt her pillar, it is strange that they allowed her the promotion. Pura. Isn't it to try to get some information from him? Sikvera. I don't think so, I would rather believe that in the event that he has a son of his who can inherit his power, they can use it as a tool in the future. I read. How despicable they are. Aisha. There is nothing we can do this is our culture, it would be better to prepare for whatever they have planned. Everyone nodded, but Lady Agares spoke. Lady Agares. Daughter. Do you think it is possible for your mate to attend the ceremony? Sikvera. I don't know, that's his decision. Lady Agares. I understand, well, I'll say goodbye, I have things to do. See you later. She said, getting ready. Sikvera. It would be better to go home and tell Issei about this. Everyone nodded and went to Issei's house. It was another day at Kuo Academy, and our brunette was having lunch with Aika and Rumi, since the others had to go to a meeting with Leisha and Sikvera, about the problems they have, and to present their entourage. Issei. Well at least winter break is approaching, no girls. Aika. I can't wait any longer, I want to be able to sleep late well sheltered in my bed. She looks surreptitiously at Issei. And how it will be cold because it's not warm with a certain person next to me while he hugs me and other things. She said giving him a look. Perverted to Issei. The brunette smiled a little nervously at what he said since the kiss. Aika has been very provocative and seductive with him, but before they continue. Rumi. Aika stop saying those things, we're at school, and don't you think you're being too obvious with those insinuations? He said with an emotionless look. Aika. Because, it bothers you that I'm not afraid to say what I want. They both began to look at each other as if they were going to kill each other, but luckily for the brunette, the bell rang to go back to class. They say. Thank God, well girls it's time for us to go back so let's go. They both calmed down and went to their classrooms. Underworld meeting room. Everyone was waiting for Sikvera and Laisha to arrive with their new entourage. A while later both arrived with the members of their entourage and presented them to the leaders and other entourages. Ajuka. Well now that the presentations are over we begin, as you know previously the new DXD group was formed to face this new enemy, thanks to our informants, we were able to discover that these creatures are sent by a person who is in a new group. But despite discovering that we couldn't get more information about them or their name. But we managed to get a location of a possible shelter where they can be found, I leave you with Azazel who has all the details. Azazel. Thanks Ajuka, well thanks to our informants, we were able to find an advance camp of these things, and thanks to that information, we were able to attack them and collect some files of the plans they had in mind, and some discs, with what seemed to be objectives. Isaka. Then show it to us, don't make us wait any longer. Azizel pressed a button, and a hologram appeared showing several folders of information. Azizel. Well, as you can see, there are three folders, one says the location of the army base, which is supposed to be the place where these things are possibly trained, the other is illegible, we couldn't decipher it yet, but the last one is what intrigues me the most, he says. Objectives and precautions, but let's start with number one. Everyone saw what the folder contained was a location with a message. Commander arrive at the extraction area, a group will take you to the hiding place where the other subjects are. End of statement. Azizel. As you heard, this guy is surely another creation of this guy, but we were able to get the location and we verified it, this is the place. It is on an island far from the human world, so in a few hours we will make an incursion to the place to discover more about these people, so prepare your armies now, ladies and gentlemen. 
Everyone was serious this could be a fight with whatever those people have there. Azazel. Well let's go with the last folder, and then we will proceed to prepare. Upon entering the file, two subfolders were seen, one said human goal and the other captured goal. Azazel. Let's see the human goal. When they opened it, they saw two profiles, but they were surprised to see one that they knew very well and another which only one of them recognized, giving them a very bad feeling. Seraphal. Why the hell is the person who interrupted the wedding and attacked the pillar in that folder? She said angrily. Azazel. These two subjects are classified as dangerous, so we must assume that this subject is very powerful for them. Sikvara and the others were serious, those people had their eyes on the brunette. Shiva. Hey, do you know anything about this, girl? He said, addressing Sikvara. Sikvara. I was not aware of this, I suppose neither was my husband since he never told me about it. Azazel. Well it was to be assumed, but leaving aside who the other guy who is there is. Scarlet. We are in serious trouble, I know that guy very well. Everyone was excited to know that. Serzichas. Scarlet Sama knows who the guy is. Scarlet. Yes, he was the only person who so far could defeat me and the old man, Yahweh. Everyone was surprised but. Michael. That's a lie father was never defeated by a human. Gabriel. How do we know if you are telling the truth? Scarlet. Well, I'll show you a memory of when we faced him. There, God of the Bible, Yahweh, faced him alone and he couldn't even hit him, then it was me, but the same result happened, and even Trahiksa herself faced him, the same thing happening. Aden. Hi as even Trahiksa faced him and lost. Scarlet. Since they believe that he was lost due to power, becoming the beast we know, after his defeat he insisted on beating him, losing himself in that desire. But it's strange that the person died a long time ago, but because they have information about him, he was a long time ago. Azazel. We don't know, but we will surely know more if we go to this place. But I wonder what that power was that he had when he fought with God. Scarlet. I don't know, he never told us, he just said that it was a power that he achieved by training tirelessly. You should tell your mate, girl. I'm sure he will be interested in knowing this. She said, looking at Sikvara, who nodded. Shiva. What are you talking about, Red, that guy shouldn't know anything about this, he has no right to know, and your girl better not even tell him anything, it's more because you don't tell him not to appear here again. Ash. Let him know, it's more likely that he's just going to hide there, he's just scared since he didn't appear again after that day, he probably got scared haha. Ha. Valerie. Well, if my rival is telling the truth, I don't even know if he showed up again after that. Ash. Come on, surely, seeing that I already have my power, he just went to hide, that time he used some trick to beat me. Sikvara got tired of listening to her man being booed so she said. Sikvara. You should shut up, scum, you're just saying that, thanks to everyone being here, I assure you that if you were in front of him, you wouldn't even be able to say anything, you're just a scaredy cat who has delusions of grandeur when he's surrounded by others. Ash. What did you call me, now you'll see who I am. Said Ash, who was standing next to her entourage ready to fight when. Ra. You better shut up kid and go back to your seat now. He said while blocking Ash's path with his scepter. Ash. Maybe you're afraid of him. Ra. I fear he will retaliate against my people because of your arrogance. Diamat. Don't worry, if you try it, we just have to have insurance against it, we just have to keep your maid in custody, and if you dare to try, just hurt her a little, so that she calms down. All the leaders were listening attentively and it seemed like an excellent idea. Ra. You'd better shut up, dragon, I won't let my people be in danger because of a simple fight between girls in love. He said, pointing the scepter at her. Ash. You better put down the scepter or else you'll have to deal with me. Ra. Told you something if you dare to do something stupid against her or someone you know, my faction will join your mate against you. Serzichas. Like you helped him. Ra. I will not let my people and town pay for their idiocies, so they better stop looking for problems. Scarlet. Even though I don't like what he said, it's true, he is too much for us, we shouldn't provoke him. Shiva. And shit. Hey, call him now. Sikvara. I won't do it. She said seriously and her entourage prepared for whatever was going to happen. Shiva. So then I will bring it. He said while accumulating power in his hand. When he was about to hit Sikvara, the bracelet that Issei gave him began to flash and released a chain of energy that immobilized Shiva. Shiva. But. I can't do anything, this is it. Scarlet. How lucky that must have been a gift from him, so be grateful that that stopped him because if it came for sure. Everyone fell silent because they began to feel a powerful aura coming from the bracelet, they were waiting for him to appear, but then a black vortex appeared from which a serious Karama emerged and began to look everywhere. Karama. Sikvara, are you okay? Sikvara. Yes, thanks to your gift, nothing happened to me. Karama. 
Well thank god that didn't happen because otherwise right now the factions would have disappeared, leaving thousands of dead. Everyone was surprised by what he said. Ajuka. What did you mean by that? Karama. You better see it, look out the window. They all went to the window and what they saw left them very scared. Bowls began to form in the sky that began to absorb everything there was, even the artificial sun of the underworld. The office. But that's who could do such a thing. Karama. If he had touched her even a strand that would have been what they would have caused, they are lucky that bracelet stopped them, or else now they would be simple cosmic dust, and all their people would have suffered the same, so I suggest you be more careful see you later Sekvara, take care, he said, disappearing through the same vortex. Rah. You see what I told you, if you dare to even touch her, she would eliminate us from this world if she wanted to, so you better control yourself. After that it was more than clear to them that they either had to mess with Sekvara or his entourage. Azazel. Well let's continue with the next objective folder. When they opened it, the leaders and others except Sekvara and Laisha and their entourage made faces of indignation and disgust when they saw who they had there. Rias. Why the hell is that pathetic human there if he has no use? Asia. So that they love him if he is just a pervert with no value, he would not even be useful as a test dummy. Auden. Maybe they should love him for his ability to adapt. Remember that despite not having power, he is still stronger than an average human, so we must assume that they plan to use him for some kind of experiment to adapt that ability to those beings they sent. Ajuka. It's true we shouldn't draw conclusions like that. Remember, they know about the previous metahumans, so they are intelligent, they must know something else about the one we don't know about. The Say's girls were worried because they had the brunette as a target. Ajuka. I think we should keep an eye on him to find out what interests them about him. Serzichas. Stop talking nonsense Ajuka, surely they only want it for revenge, remember that surely that group recruited the survivors of the Del Cow's brigade, and they want to make him pay for having defeated them. Azazel surely that must be it, well with this already resolved we must prepare for tonight, we will attack this base to obtain more information, so prepare yourselves, everyone was going to prepare for the raid that they would do at night. Human world. Issei was meditating in the patio of his house because he sent Karama with the girls, since Ikvara's bracelet began to protect her, and through it, he was able to put everyone in an illusion, where they saw the black hole that was in the sky of the underworld. Issei. Well, I guess I'll be alone today, I think I'll go see if there's anything, he interrupted on the television, he said as he headed inside the house. Hours later Issei was hungry so he headed to the kitchen, but he didn't realize that his QB companion had devoured what there was. Issei. Ah that bastard is a black hole, where the hell all the food he eats goes, well I think I'll take advantage of this, and I'll go eat there. He said while well, he was changing and preparing to go out to eat. Hum the sky is very cloudy something will happen, if things get worse with the girl's mission, I will have to interrupt again, so it will be better to pay attention to his call. He said while well, he was heading to a place to eat. When Issei arrived he asked the waitress for his food. Waiter. Well I understand it would be $2,500. If you want to eat here or we will take it to some address. Issei. This is the payment and I will eat here. Suddenly Issei feels a dark presence that was watching him. Sorry, could I take you to this place in about 4 hours please? Waiter. Of course, no problem, I already paid for it, so within that period your food will arrive at your home. Issei. Thank you, then I'll leave because I have things to do. He said, leaving the premises. After leaving he started walking towards the forest, he had been walking for a while when he stopped in front of a river. Issei. You better get out of there, I can feel you even if you hide it very well. He said while looking at one tree from which a being came out. Issei. Who are you and what is your purpose here? Black Knight. I am Argon Dark Knight, former deserter of the Pendragon Order, I was entrusted with the task of capturing you, my lord has plans with you, so it is better that you surrender without resisting. Issei. Because I'm always the one attacked, I won't go with you so you better prepare yourself since I won't fall easily, but first tell me you were the one who was following me a few days ago. Argon. No, our group started following you today, we watched you when you were with the factions, after that we left you aside until the professor said that you would be a good specimen to create new, stronger warriors from your blood. Issei. I have to assume that your group has the same intentions as the cow's brigade, but even so if they want me they will have to beat me to do so. Argon. This is how it will be, a warrior does not fall without first putting up a fight that does not embarrass him. They both looked at each other seriously in a fighting pose. Argon took out a long sword. But Lissay took out a sword. Enemy fortress location. Attack. All factions were ready to attack. Everything was silent, a silence that could easily be said to make the atmosphere more gloomy until it was heard. Everyone turned their gaze to see who was the one who played that song, meeting a blue-haired girl along with 12 other women. Sorry, I dropped it. 
They're Jer, these things always happen in serious moments. Jer. Sorry sister Brunhold, but the atmosphere was too dark, so I listened to the music to relax. Give me your cell phone now, this is not the time for you to be distracted, you are always with these things, you should be more serious, you are no longer a little girl, give it to me, you should not get carried away by that music. Jer. No sister Ragnolf you will take it away from me for a long time. Brunhold. You should stop that, it's just a simple song, nothing more. Jer, upon hearing that, had a serious look, surprising her sisters who knew what her attitude was like. Jer. Don't say that again, this song was composed by a person I admire a lot, so don't you dare say that it's just a simple song. Brunhold. Who is the author Jer? Jer. He is the previous Ekaruate, right now he is an ordinary person who sings and publishes his songs on an account he has, I like him because despite having lost everything he still moves forward giving his all in his songs, he showed me that in the face of any adversity, one he can get up, that's why I like him a lot, even though he is hated by almost everyone in the supernatural. The sisters were surprised by what their little sister had said, she had never been so direct and firm about anything. Brunhold. Well, it's true that he is in exile, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Jer. Have you never heard their songs? Have you taken and played the songs that are there? The while after the sisters had heard Issei's music, they were impressed by his voice. Brunhold. Well, I must admit that he has talent, but that alone is still very immature and simple in appearance. Jer. Sister, you see how you see now, after a while he had some changes in his appearance, let me show you. He said while passing a photo of the brunette with his current look. Sikvera and the others were listening from behind, a little angry because of how they were seeing the brunette, but when they heard Jer's words, they saw that he was not lying, that his feelings were pure. Brunhold. Well that did surprise me, he became more handsome and serious, I think I underestimated him, now he seems much more mature and handsome. The leaders and other beings listened to this with a serious face because of what they said about Issei, Issei's exes began to murmur why the useless man was interested in whether they could be with Ash, who is better than him, and more noble, loving and loyal according to them. 11. When they were going to say something, they heard how the doors of the fortress began to open from which a person came out. Come out my guests I know you are here. The leaders, seeing that they had lost the element of surprise, came out to confront him. Serziches. Who are you? Victor. Oh where are my manners call me Victor Abad and former monarch of the Infernal Legions. Seraphal. Impossible the Infernal Legions were eliminated before the Great War happened, it is impossible for you to be their leader. Victor. Oh little silly girl it is true that the legions perished, but they never found their leader or yes, unfortunately that day I was not there, or else we would have finished off all of you easily, but this is not the time for this I have many pending matters to deal with, so I say goodbye. Michael. Do you think we'll let you go after you tell us who you are? Victor. And they think they can stop me, first they must face my soldiers, let my creatures come out and bathe in the blood of all of them, don't leave any of them alive. He said as he disappeared in a black cloud. Everyone was confused to whom he spoke, but before doing anything the ground began to open from which the creatures that had been fighting for a long time came out. Everyone stood serious and in formation waiting to attack. Both sides were waiting for the moment to attack, the factions were preparing their attacks, while the legion were roaring eagerly to bathe in their blood, everyone was waiting when a rock fell off a ledge, causing everyone to rush against it. Of their enemy the factions cast spells defeating some creatures, while the legion attacked them with pure force. Neither gave in to the other when suddenly the leaders began to act. The mass launched their powers, destroying ranks of creatures, while the cadres and seraphs launched a rain of spears that impaled others. Everyone believed that thanks to them it would be over soon when suddenly a horn was heard. The legion, faced with this, retreated and shielded themselves in their ranks, taking out shields that emanated an energy that surrounded them, forming a dome. The factions faced this and wondered what it was about when they began to feel energies coming out of the fortress. Odin back, everyone step back and get ready, something is coming. Suddenly a burst of energy came out of the fortress and directed the factions who were barely able to form a magical seal, generating a barrier. When the energy hit the barrier, it began to break the barrier, scaring everyone when suddenly. Odin. Protect your faithful inhabitants and your allies' great wall of Midgar. He said, hitting his staff on the ground, generating a structure identical to the walls of Asgard. Just smaller. They surrounded all the factions, saving them from the attack that managed to destroy the shield they had made, but even with this, the force of the attack was too much, which began to crack the defenses that Odin maintained. When he was about to secede, the attack began to fade, giving to understand that it ended up making Odin fall exhausted to the ground, being helped by the other leaders, receiving the ovation of his soldiers for having saved them, but it didn't last long, because twelve people came out of the fortress door. One of them showing signs of fatigue making them understand that he was the one who launched the attack. 
Wow, I didn't think they could resist my attack. He said while blowing smoke from his guns. It seems like I underestimated them, but now that doesn't matter since we, the generals of the Infernal Legion, will go into action. Shut up once and let's get this over with. I don't like facing these weak beings. Calm down we will finish quickly and leave. It's true we will finish this without even using all our power. Let's do it since we have to see if he was able to capture it, so make sure to hurry. The factions were analyzing the opponents, trying to decipher their strength. The five generals that appeared began to fight, beginning to gain ground due to their enormous strength. Everyone tried to stop their progress without any luck, but before they continued a familiar voice spoke. Victor. Enough my generals, let's retreat for now, we've achieved what we wanted, so let's go. The five nodded and headed behind their leader, along with what was left of his army, disappearing in front of everyone without leaving any trace. The factions were relieved, they had lost many in this raid, but they had managed to make them retreat as they believed, but before they could continue celebrating they began to feel a tremor, so they turned their gaze towards the fortress which began to crumble, and before they could do something, an explosion had occurred, erasing all traces of the place. A while later we see the factions healing their wounded from the battle they had. The leaders were resting. While talking about the enemy leader. Isaka. Who was that guy called Victor? Gabriel. He was Lilith's brother when she fell and father turned her into a devil. Her brother had been angry about it, father had to confine him to prevent him from doing anything, since he was one of those who knew about father's work, but we thought he had died, now he is back, although he won't show it, he felt immense hatred towards us. Serzich's. This is bad that's why we felt that strange essence in the creatures, he gave his blood which helped create those aberrations, but we still don't know how he is alive, and why he showed up now we don't even know his plan. Before they could continue talking, a devil soldier arrived asking to speak to them. Demon soldier. Lord Lucifer, I have news from the human world. Serzichas. What's happening? Devil Solider. When we were going to escort the Haidu lords we felt an increase of energy coming from the outskirts of the city near the base of the mountain. Serzichas. Whose energy is that? Devil Solider. We couldn't find out sir, a barrier was put up seconds after they started. Zeus. Must be a member of the Infernal Legion who went to look for something. The office. But who is he facing then? Scarlet. Wait, I'm talking about leaving a gap to see what's happening in there. He said while tearing the nothingness forming a gap. They are fighting inside a ghost dimension which recreates the entire Kuo area, that's why they couldn't see what they were doing. The others heard what they were talking about and approached when the gap began to clear. They were all surprised by what they saw. The entire base of the mountain and the forest were devastated, or they could believe that this was caused by two people fighting each other, they suddenly saw flashes and the clashing sound of swords. Scarlet focused on the area where this was happening, but when she saw who that knight was fighting against, the factions put on a face of hatred, plus the brunette's exes. The one who was there was Issei, demonstrating that with or without power, he could still fight against anyone who was his. Enemy, some were serious about this, others despised the fact that it was the brunette, booing him, and some did not say anything, although they encouraged the exiled man inside, the brunette's girls and the Valkyries were watching the brunette's fight, hoping that he would not get hurt. At that point everyone sees how the knight and Isaiah launch themselves against each other. Minutes before forest clearing at the foot of the mountain. They both looked at each other seriously, waiting for any movement from the other, when suddenly they both launched themselves towards the other, clashing their swords, the impact of both weapons generated a spark. Issei, at this, deflected the Argon weapon with his weapon, but when he saw that he kicked the witch Issei blocked with his sword, the force that Argon exerted was enough to push the brunette away and be able to return to his defensive posture. Argon. I see that you know something about swords, I thought you were more into magic attacks than melee based on what we saw of your combats. They say. Ha, after everything that happened to me I decided not to depend solely on power, so I worked hard to learn to fight hand to hand. Argon. I see, this will be fun. I haven't faced an opponent like this in a long time. Make sure you give me an honorable fight. Without further waiting, both of them launched themselves again, beginning an exchange of clashes. They were both smiling, they had never been so happy to be able to fight like this against a good adversary. They say. This is exciting, I never felt so alive when I faced someone. Argon. The feeling is mutual. It's been a long time since I had a fight this entertaining. They both moved away, taking offensive stances. Argon. I think it's time to get serious. He said, stepping firmly and preparing to give everything. They say. Yes, I think it's time to finish this. He said, starting to exert more force on his grip. They say Argon, they both launched themselves, starting to clash their weapons, destroying everything around them. 
Issei accidentally received a cut on the left side of his abdomen while Largon was preparing the next blow, but Issei managed to dodge it by giving an upward cut, leaving a mark on my armor from which blood began to flow. Argon. Not bad kid but this isn't over yet. He said jumping back while making a slash in front of which Issei dodged. The brunette looked up and saw how Argon created a portal from which a gigantic being emerged. Argon. Now let's finish this, he said while the giant roared and went towards Issei. But the factions. Everyone could not believe what they saw, the one they had discarded still demonstrated that without power he could face whoever was going to face him, the mass wanted to know where he got the strength from, while the others began to believe that Issei was beginning to get stronger to take revenge. Of them, the soldiers did not pay much attention to the exiled man, but rather to his opponent, whom they would have to face in the future. But they all began to be scared by the creature that the knight had summoned. Issei's girls and her friends were scared to see what the brunette was about to face. While little Jer and Brunhold were attentive to Issei, thinking that nothing would happen to him, Jer began to get scared thinking that she could die hugging one of her sisters, without taking her eyes off the gap. Back in the fight. Issei. Ha, and I thought I'd get home earlier to watch a movie while I wait for dinner. He said sighing. At that point he dodged a tree that the giant threw, jumping from tree to tree, but in an accident Argon appeared behind him, giving him a blow that sent him towards the giant, who hit him, sending him to the replica of the city, after that Argon and the creature went in search of Issei. Ghost city. Issei was embedded in a building. Issei. Well, I felt that. He said coming out of the hole. As he looked out he could see a fire attack that was directed towards the building which he barely avoided by jumping to the roof of one. Issei. He, what happened to that hand-to-hand -hand fight? Argon. I don't have time for that, I'm ordered to capture you, and we're being watched by my group and the faction leaders, so I have to finish this quickly. Issei. Wow and I thought ours was something lasting. He said smiling. Argon. Launched a slash which destroyed the building. The brunette had jumped avoiding the blow, but the creature had intercepted him by hitting him with a building, burying him in the ground, while continuing to hit where Issei was. Argon. Decadent, finish this now. The creature shouted, implying that it should end now. The decadent, upon hearing that, stopped hitting where Issei was and began to gather energy in his mouth, generating a sphere of fire, but before he could throw it, Issei's sword came out of the crater, heading towards the decadent's head, but before it arrived. The brunette appeared holding the sword while in the other hand, he had a Rasengan which hit the decadent man's face, sending him to the ground due to the force of the crash. Before Issei fell he threw the sword towards a ledge which, when he reached it, the brunette teleported to it. Issei. I must admit that I almost fell unconscious because of that. At that point he dodges a slash of argon energy by jumping to the other side. Hey, give me a break, he just came out of the rubble. Argon, without saying anything, continued launching attacks at Issei, which responded in the same way, but then the decadent man got up again and went towards him. The fight was complicated for Issei, there was not only one adversary but two, and one had quick attacks, while the other was brute force, it was a very good strategy since they did not let him act, and he knew that they were watching him, so he could not use his eyes, because they would know that he was the one who saved Sekvera, so he had to solve it with his strength and agility. While he dodged the decadent and blocked Argon's sword, he was thinking about how to win in this situation when, without him being able to dodge, both adversaries gave a combined attack, warning that he could dodge it, sending him flying through several buildings. Dark Zone. Unknown territory. Victor was watching the fight with the professor, analyzing the brunette's abilities, but further back the generals were also watching, but of which four of them were staring at the brunette, they knew who he was due to the information the professor gave them, but they couldn't help but be. Interested in Issei's way of fighting, but without them realizing it, from a shadow there was a person watching the fight, worried, hoping that Issei came out of this fight well. City in ruins. The injured Issei emerged from the rubble shaking off the dust. Issei. Damn, this is getting more and more complicated, I have to take care of one of them first, but they won't let him attack. At that, the decadent approaches with Argon on his shoulder, standing in front of Issei. Issei, without anything else to do, stands up and once again brandishes his sword ready to continue fighting, but before he can launch he hears a whisper. He turns his head in confusion, looking for something. Where it came from but he didn't see anyone but him and his enemies, but then he heard it again louder. You're not alone. Issei. Who are you? The brunette shouted to the sky, confusing everyone. Say it, say my name. Issei. What name? He said confused. Everyone believed that the recent blow had disoriented him, a tired Argon decided to finish this, so he ordered the decadent to brace him, when the decadent raised his arms wanting to hit with all his strength, a white sphere appeared in front of Issei. Sphere. Say my name to invoke me say it with all your spirit say it. Issei. What is your name? Isle. Vulcano. Issei. Answer my Vulcan call. 
He shout with everything he has. A few seconds passed and nothing happened, everyone believed that he had lost his mind and was raving, but then everything began to shake, and the ground behind his aid began to open, emerging a creature that no one knew except Karama, who knew who it was and was very surprised that it was. Appeared by the call of Issei. Everyone was surprised by the creature that appeared. Issei. He was also surprised, but at that moment the creature approached his hand towards the creature to understand why it would climb up to her, the brown one without resisting climbed up, and the giant brought him closer to his face. Issei. I guess you're Vulcan, right? The giant roared in acceptance. Issei. Well, help me, please take care of that thing. Pointing at the decadent. Well I go get its summoner. Vulcano nodded, leaving Issei on his shoulder, the decadent beginning to run, being imitated by the enemies, both titans collided with each other while they struggled, while Issei and Argon were clashing swords on a building. At that, Vulcano grabbed the decadent and began to spin, throwing him away while he roared and went back against it, but the decadent grabbed a piece of the building and threw it at Vulcano, leaving him stunned, being taken advantage of by him giving him a blow, knocking him down. Well the brunette and the knight continued fighting, but then the brunette dropped his weapon, confusing Argon, but he quickly dodged a blow from the brunette, but he did not notice the sweep he made, which lifted him off the ground, but he could not react because he hit him. In the stomach destroying part of his armor sending him to the sky, Issei grabbed his sword and threw it like this Argon who was falling from the sky, but he was able to dodge it, but when he saw where Issei was he didn't see it, and he received a hammer blow on his back, sending him quickly and abruptly to the ground, burying him, destroying the little that remained of his armor. At that moment Issei begins to run, while brandishing his sword, Argon stood up from the ground and imitated Issei's action. They both collided with each other, starting a sword fight. In the carelessness on the part of both, their swords flew away due to the force of the impact, but that did not stop them, they began to hit each other with their bare hands, but Argon hits him, sending him to the sky, but Issei composes himself, and with the help of some light cables, he manages to maneuver in the air and goes like that. When it was about to be the last blow, Issei gathered all his strength in one hand and launched himself towards him, while Argon did the same. Issei was able to dodge his attack and managed to pierce the armor and Argon chest, while in the background, Vulcan did the same with the decadent. Everyone watching was surprised by the fight between the brunette and the knight. Victor, seeing that his general had decisively lost the spell with which he watched the fight, went to the laboratory followed by the professor, while the rest of the generals were serious about the fight that one of their colleagues had, but the four girls were interested in the fight. Strength and conviction that the brunette showed in the fight but without saying anything, each one retired to their rooms while in the shadows the person who was secretly seeing was sighing with relief at seeing the brunette win the fight. I'm glad you're okay ice Kun. we'll see each other again soon, but first I have to know what this organization is up to with them before we meet again, he said as he disappeared from the place. Laboratory. Victor. We underestimated him, despite losing all help from the supernatural, he is still a formidable enemy, we must hurry up and advance our plans. Professor X. So what do we do, we leave it and continue with what we planned, remember that if you want your troops to be able to resist those powers we need that boy, since he is the key. Victor. Not only will we advance the plan in a few days at the ceremony when he makes his appearance and catches them, we will send all the generals and soldiers to make sure we catch him, so prepare them, we will need these wonders to catch him. He said, seeing a camera that was showing two giant capsules being prepared. Professor. Be sure to send them as soon as they are in the growth phase, we do not know if they will be enough to capture it. Victor. They should not capture him but tire him out so the generals can easily act against him. I don't think underestimating him again. But the factions. Everyone was silent due to the display of power of both combatants. When they were about to speak, a girl screams with joy. Jer. Yes, I can beat him, you saw, sisters, it was great. Brunhold. Wow, I must admit, he was very impressive in that fight. Ragnolf. It was incredible, but how could he summon that thing? Jer. I don't know but what I do know is that he was fantastic, I would like to meet him. She said blushing, being seen by her sisters who were astonished at this. Balsak Vera and the others were sighing when they saw that the brunette was safe now, but then Karama disappeared from the place going to the brunette to help him. Scarlet. I can't believe it, even after stripping away everything, it's still that strong. The office. We must watch him, the Legion knew that he was hiding something, that's why they wanted to capture him. Zeus. We must send someone to keep an eye on him. We must not overlook this. We do not know what he may be planning now that he has that power. Serzichus. It will be better to meet later and see who we sent, we should think carefully. Rias and the others were upset to see that even without them, Issei was still capable of putting up a fight, but Ash was serious. He didn't count on this. He thought he had taken care of him, but now he knew that he was getting stronger. 
Bulmio was thinking about how he got this power and why he didn't show it when he was with her, but everyone shuts up and pays attention to the gap since Issei was addressing Argon who could barely stay alive. Issei. It was a good fight Argon, but still only one could be the winner. Argon. Hahaha, <laughs> yuck, disgusting. He spat out blood. If it's true only one could be victorious, but tell me one thing you were holding back right. Issei just looked at him seriously. Argon. Your silence says it all ha, and to think that I thought you were weak after what you suffered. Issei. That's what you don't understand, I didn't let that break me down, but I kept going becoming stronger thanks to a person who supported me after that. Argon. Haha, <laughs> you are a great warrior, perhaps if we had met before when the my order of knights still existed we would have been great friends, but now I am just a simple knight who deserted his order in search of power and let myself be influenced by it. Issei. Don't despise yourself, we all make mistakes sometimes, what matters is accepting that we did wrong, I know that your former classmates will forgive you. Argon. He, you're a good boy, don't end up like me, this will help you in the future. He said as he proceeded to pierce his chest, taking out a sphere from the place where his heart was, silently dead as it disappeared into particles. Issei took the sphere which, upon touching it, disappeared inside him in a purple trail. Seeing this, he only got up and buried the remains of Argon's armor and stuck his sword where the grave was as a sign of respect, then he turned his gaze to Vulcan, who was approaching while dragging the corpse of the decadent. Issei. Thanks for helping me. Vulcano. See you soon. He said as he went towards the crack from which he came out, which when he entered it began to close as if nothing had come out of there. Issei began to leave the place when he saw that Karama was on a rock next to a clone of himself dressed in the clothes he had worn at Sekvera's wedding, and he understood what he wanted to do. Everything supernatural was exalted, that guy who hurt Shiva and Ash was in front of the exiled man. They didn't know why, but then they saw that the guy raised his thumb towards Issei and started to get closer. Clone. You were impressive young Issei, but you must not stay stagnant you must continue training, since we will need it in the future, we must prepare for what is to come, so you better keep practicing. Issei. Understood monarch of the abyss. He said kneeling. Sekvera and the others smiled at this. Karama. Calm down, young man, in a few days we will go to your home to train you, so rest for now since we must strengthen you, and you still don't control your eyes like he does, so he will help you with that in due course. The entire underworld was stunned, not only did that guy have that strange power, but also the exile was learning to use it. Shiva. What is that bastard doing there? Ash. What does that guy have planned now? Scarlet. This is very bad, not only is the brunette who has a strange power, but also now that unfortunate man says that he has the same power as him. Seraphil. We must plan our next move quickly. Everyone nodded, but then they turned and saw that both the brunette and Karama were watching them, and in one movement, Issei threw a blade destroying the gap, leaving everyone even more worried. When everyone saw that, they decided to go back and plan what they should do with what they saw, while Sekvera and the others returned to Issei's house. When they arrive they see Issei and Karama sitting while they were healing the brunette's wounds. All the girls go to him, knocking him down while hugging him. Issei. Calm down, I'm fine girls. The while after they calmed them down everyone was sitting talking about what happened, but then the bell rang, and the happy brunette headed towards the door where when he returned he brought the food he had ordered, everyone ate and went to sleep, Ruby and the others, like Ren, John, Per and Nora, stayed in some rooms that they had to spare, while Sekfera. Laisha and Issei went to the room where both girls had an incredible night, where Laisha gave herself to Issei which was left completely dry. For both girls and for how tired he was from the fight, while in the room was a serious Karama for the creature that the brunette had called. Karama. If he came now it must be because the world is in serious danger. Tomorrow I will tell Issei about Vulcan and that we must strengthen ourselves, but now I will let him rest. He earned it. He said as he went to sleep. Hours later. 3 o'clock in the morning. The brunette was lying next to his mates, but if we look closer we can notice that where his heart is located, it began to glow purple, while releasing a purple trail which disappeared after that. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.